matchup, which means that uh, the Falcons here are only a minus three heading into this match because it looks to me like a great bet for the Falcons to potentially blow the Panthers out. I think could, Carolina's been back there, Ed, too. It could have line. a bit to do with the Falcons clinching that division as well, pressure off, maybe ah, yeah. take the foot yeah. off the pedal a little yeah, that bit. Happens. I think that possibly could be it. Some teams still jockeying, obviously, for... Uh, uh, you know, you, for your uh, home field advantage. But you look at the NFC, uh, the Falcons have a two-game lead on the, on the 49ers, two-and-a-half game, and, and uh, you're not even close, three-game lead on some of these teams. So they almost virtually have that number one seed sewn up. So mm. my guess is that might a be it. A win's a win. That might it. be it, yeah. We do need to uh, take a quick break. We've got studs and duds, uh, the issues of the week. A little bit of a look at some of the NBA fixtures as well to come after this on Bet Stars and Stripes. Take BetStar on at betstar.com.au. Escandus BetStar, proudly Australian owned. Uh, look out for BetStar's feature doubles uh, or feature uh, lines, uh, $2 power lines in the NFL uh, over the course of the season on Sundays. Uh, just a couple of other things. Australia have won their fifth consecutive Champions Trophy with a golden goal victory over the Dutch and what a goal it was! Yep. It was an absolute belter. It was a it was a ripper, that's for sure. They won with about two and a half minutes to go in the first period of extra time. Hobart need forty three off thirty four to beat Brisbane. They're two wickets down. They look likely to win. Uh, Travis Burt, one of the stars of last season, and Oway Shah Ditto, both uh, putting on a fifty run partnership here. And Western Sydney have beaten Brisbane one nil with a penalty in the eighty seventh minutes. We'll take a break and be back. <laughs> This is Bet Stars and Stripes with Dr. Turf, Ed Wyatt and Alaskander. 12 minutes to 9 o'clock. Uh, Hobart uh, needing 38 off 30. Looks set to chase down the runs against Brisbane. Teo, we've got another market. Yep, so before we jump into studs and duds and a bit of uh, talk about college, uh, Monday night football, Tuesday at 12.35, so half past midday Australian time. The Houston Texans are $2.60. The New England Patriots $1.51. And on bedstar.com.au, the power lines, the Patriots, three and a half point favourites. And the over-under on this one, they're expecting a high-scoring Monday night football. 50.5 points. Huge uh, game. You know, playoff uh, AFC Championship preview maybe, dare Houston, we say. Houston uh, line three and a half, did you say? Three and a half. That's an absolute gimme. That's, oh, that's a, that, yeah? that is a good bet. Are, are, mm. are we still worried about Houston in these big events, though, the Sunday night, Monday night football or... Did the win against the Chicago Bears maybe get that monkey off the back that we can, me. we can trust them on the big stage now? Yeah, look, and, and I think at this point, I think they're a better team than New England in, in a weird way. I mean, New England obviously is at home, and and this is a this is one that uh, New England kind of needs for this. You know, if they want a little home field advantage because they're battling Denver right now. Denver won on uh, the early game, beat Oakland, so they're ten and three. So New England needs to keep pace with Denver if they want, and Baltimore if they want that home field advantage. So I do think this is a big game. What's the record of, percentage-wise, off the top of your (laughs) head, home teams in playoffs? Uh, Is it a big advantage? I'm not convinced it is, but I'm saying that honestly, Doc, off the top of my head. We've seen in the past few years there have been some some, uh, teams that have bucked that trend. And the Texans' defense, we know, lost Brian Cushing earlier in the year, but would Tom Brady be losing any sleep over facing JJ Watt? Is he <laughs> yeah. is he the one guy in the AFC that he would be concerned about having to throw against? He's an outstanding player. I mean, I'm not convinced Brady's losing too much sleep in general because he's been around for so long. Yeah. You know, he's such a such a superstar and a, and a, and a veteran. But uh, yeah, Watt is incredible. It's going to be. I think this is as intriguing a game as we've got in this round, without a doubt. The Socceroos uh, needed to beat Taiwan five nil. They lead five nil at half time. Hey. So, uh, Tracking along very nicely in that match after uh, North Korea beat Hong Kong 4-0 North a little Korea. bit earlier on. Well, they're allowed to play, are they? Uh, yeah, of course probably they sometimes. Yes. It's all inclusive, they dog. Maybe the only it's North Koreans being, being fed at the moment. We'll, uh, we'll get you the goal scorers uh, when we have them. <laughs> uh, a little bit slow coming through to us, but uh, we'll endeavour to get Archie you. has five. Can I just throw that out there? Yeah, he Archie, might. He kicks three in four minutes or something. <laughs> they play, they're playing this time? <laughs> Uh, Taiwan. Oh, they're playing Taiwan. Oh, so they've they've ruined Guam soccer. So and now they're ruining Tai Taiwanese <laughs> soccer. Taggart scored <laughs> twice. Garcia, Cornthwaite, and Bayich, the scorers for Australia. So uh, they're the five goals that they have produced. Uh, studs and duds. Before we look at some uh, some of the NBA mm. games to come and a little bit of the college scene, education as well, which we'll be running. Where Ed will explain uh, 
a concept or piece of terminology in US sport. But we'll start off with the studs. We always like to be kind before we are cruel. And uh, Ed, <laughs> your uh, your nomination for this week. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, my Stanford man, Andrew Luck. Uh, he was just extraordinary again. Threw three interceptions, but also threw four touchdown passes. An incredible uh, finish uh, through a, a game winner to Donnie Avery as time w- uh, ran out. Just, again, the poise, the uh, calm under pressure for a rookie, just extraordinary. extraordinary. I'm going for uh, Charlie Batch. Um he was under a lot of pressure, was he not, as the uh, standing quarterback? Uh, Third string, yeah. Whilst Rothelberger has yeah. been out injured. The Steelers were in trouble. I mean, he hadn't won a game, I don't think, Batch. No, uh, he came in uh, when, because uh, Leftwich, the backup, got injured too. He was yep. terrible. Lost was, the game to Cleveland. And he had terrible. a shocker last week, yeah. Batch. But he had a blinder last week. Uh, with all that pressure on him and on the team, I mean, Pittsburgh had to win. Yeah, uh, and he delivered the goods, Charlie. And uh, I assume Roethlisberger's back, so he's uh... he is meant to be back this week. And I have to choose a fellow member of the the Knee Rico Club, Adrian <laughs> Peterson. He's an MVP candidate on the back of 210 yards. Uh, in the 23-14 loss to the Packers, but he had his longest touchdown in his career, 82 yards, and uh, also a 48-yard uh, burst in the third quarter. But the 82-yard touchdown, the longest of his career, and he broke a tackle before disappearing down the field. He was a stud last week. He's been great. Uh, and now the duds of the week, those mm. who didn't have a great day at the office. Well, I'll be a little controversial and say uh, Colin Kaepernick, the 49ers quarterback, who, who, who displaced been... Alex Smith. He's been great. He's been great. He's been very good. Backfired last week when they had him run an option play, and he made a bad pitch, and it was uh, probably a bad call. you got to put that one on uh, Jim Harbaugh as well. But St. Louis picked it up, uh, scored a touchdown, and then ended up beating the 49ers in overtime. So the Rams have tied and beaten the 49ers this year, so it's one of those go figures. Uh, soft target, me. Mark Sanchez. Uh, <laughs> and Look, I know he had the shocker last week and fumbling it and uh, in, throwing interceptions and at one point uh, running backwards into a teammate and fumbling the ball, which yes. I, I think was probably a... Piece of comedy, wasn't it? <laughs> it was like horror show. The butt fumble. But, <laughs> but, but last that. week... In three quarters, he threw 97 yards in mm. three quarters. Uh, three interceptions and then was replaced at three-quarter time. And um, the uh, guy came in. Greg and, uh, McElroy. Sorry, McElroy came in. You don't know it. that name. Jeez, everyone knows McElroy, him. Yeah, threw, a, threw, a, <laughs> threw a touchdown after uh, only being on the, on the, on the pitch for uh, a few minutes. So, Sanchez, uh, mm. it... I thought it hit rock bottom last week. <laughs> it keeps getting worse. But you actually, it? you actually plumb new depth. <laughs> and uh, my nomination for the Dad of the Week, Ryan Lindley. He's played five ty- uh, two games now for five interceptions and no touchdown passes. Last season, a quarterback with his sort of numbers, Tyler Palco, actually stole a win for Kansas City against Chicago. But I can't see Ryan Lindley doing the same for Arizona. I don't think they'll win again this year. Yeah, which would mean they would have won their first four and lost their last 12 if that happens, which would be amazing. Uh, just updating, Peter Senior winning the Australian Open. Hobart needs 31 off 23. You can make that 30 off 22. She's struggling a little bit yeah. the last yeah, P- Pereira are. came on and bowled a pretty nice over and put the... Uh, Put the skids on them a little bit. Uh, mm. Perth to play Adelaide as well. It is a double header, so uh, we'll have that game ready to go very shortly. Ed, the Heisman Trophy was decided. Three candidates, including uh, Manti T E apostrophe O, so Teo, Teo yeah. brother uh, of yours uh, from really. Hawaii. Um, but first defensive player that was nominated for a, a long time, but it went to the guy they called Johnny Football. Tell us a bit more about this guy, Johnny Mansell. And Heisman Trophy, I'm kind of uses my education, which goes to the mm. uh, they yep. say the best college player. Really, is the uh, one that. His most performance in you know indicates yeah you know, he's the pursuit of excellence or some nonsense like that. But it usually goes to the to the best player. Uh, teams run campaigns. Schools actually mail out uh, uh, cards and they put billboards up in New York City and things like that. But uh, Johnny Manziel or Johnny Football <laughs> is a uh, freshman. He's the first freshman or first year player to ever win the Heisman Trophy. A lot of people thought that would uh, restrict people voting for him, but he's been exceptional. Uh, 
uh, for Texas A&M. Extraordinary uh, football player. Led them to the big win against Alabama in Alabama, which is a freshman. is pretty extraordinary. He's got great skills, kind of that mobile sort of John Elway, Robert Griffin kind of mobility. Not as fast as Griffin, but really, really good player. He wins the Heisman, and uh, I think it's a, it, I think he's a worthy candidate. Manti Teo is a very good player, but there are other good defensive players as well. It's much harder for a linebacker to have the same impact that why, a quarterback why was, does. Um, Army Navy, I couldn't find it today. Oh, don't get me started on that one. My dad is very close to a lot of guys in Army. He's involved in the Army football program. 11th straight loss to Navy. Navy took the lead. Army marched down the field to about the 15 and fumbled. Oh, geez. And just a heartbreaker. Uh, it was on CBS Live. I watched it on the web, so web and on my phone. No, 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 legitimate okay. on my phone. But it uh, wasn't on TV, unfortunately. Big game. So Sell out every year. Uh, it was a heck of a game, but Army people, I can tell you, my dad was uh, too depressed to answer many emails today. He just sent a couple back. I'm not taking this one very well, was his last email. <laughs> Bowl season start <laughs> Wednesday? 15th, I think. I think it's in a week, maybe. We start okay. out with some bowls. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll have a lot of that next week. All these 40 bowls or whatever the hell they've got this year. The uh, the BetStar market is open, though, on the BCS Championship game. Alabama are 10.5 Favorite dollar ninety the line ten point favorite a dollar twenty seven to win and Notre Dame three dollar seventy outsiders. If you are having a bet on this one, Edward, you take the points and hope that Notre Dame rise to the occasion, or can Alabama win this one in a blowout? It's not until January eight, so plenty of time to, uh, to mull over this. Plenty one. Plenty of time. If you want to get in early on BetStar, the market is already open. Uh, it is going to either be an Alabama blowout. Or a close Notre Dame win. Now, I know that doesn't help a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Alabama's not going to win a three-point game. So I think the line, if you believe in Alabama, I think the line's going to be okay. Notre Dame's defense has been so good. People have counted them out all year. They really are the underdogs, and they've come through when they've needed to come through. So you can't really write them off. But, look, we've still got a little time for some things to go wrong, guys. I think three Oregon State players got arrested today. So that's going to put their bowl, <laughs> their bowl uh, plans on hold a little bit. So we just have to, we have to keep in mind that there is a lot of time. Some things can still happen. Plenty of the other uh, bowl lineups. Anything else stand out amongst those that we haven't discussed? Rose Bowl, Orange Bowl, Cotton Bowl, Sugar Bowl, Fiesta Bowl. The best game is going to be the Fiesta Bowl. And I know I'm a little bit prejudiced here being an Oregon fan, but Oregon Kansas State is going to be a big game. I think you probably bet the over on that one, even though the over is 76 points. I think that one's got a 45 40 or a 55 45 written. Oregon's averaging 50 points a game, guys. So, I mean, I think it's uh, that's going to be a great game to watch. And the other one is interesting is the Rose ball because the coach just jumped to uh, another school. He went to Arkansas. So the old coach who's now the athletic director, Barry Alvarez, who's 3-0 and in Rose Bowls, is coming back to coach Wisconsin against Stanford. So that's a very, very good story. That not, one. not to digress too much, but I uh, just found this tweet rather amusing from Adam Peacock talking about opening up old scars. He goes, job just about done for the Socceroos unless the Chinese version of Peter Hoare tackles a net and allows Taiwan to compose themselves. <laughs> <laughs> just for, uh, for those who want to venture uh, a long memory. That venture is, back yeah, in well, time. Well, to oh, that, oh, the 15-year uh, anniversary, that was about a week and a half oh, ago. was that the so MVG wow. that night? That yeah, was That was horrible. And then he uh, almost tackled he? Martin Power later that year, didn't he? He did. Halfway yeah. down the Flemington oh, Strait. I think he actually... Uh, and the Australian Open, he walked on court. He was playing that day. And, well, he, mm. and yeah. the, uh, went to, was it Michael Hutchins' funeral? Mm. In, in American he sports, might have been, yeah. who was the guy right. with the... Um, Rainbow wig. That, that is so up. funny that you John just mentioned that. Yeah, my son just had one of those wigs, and I put it on him and made him hold of a 316 <laughs> sign to send to my family. This guy named Rockin' Rollin, who was a guy that made some money somehow, wealthy guy that used to travel events spreading the gospel by wearing that hat and holding up John 316. <laughs> but, but he wasn't national television. He wasn't a serial pest, though. He no, was no, he paid for he paid for his tickets. Oh, and he good, went right. and sat there, and but always sat in a great prime TV position. Great uh, story. Hobart need uh, 20 off 16, and they've just hit another boundary, so 16 Ooh, off 15, they should be right. Uh, NBA games tomorrow, a couple to look at. Uh, Oklahoma City, pretty strong favourites at home against the Indiana Pacers. A nine-point line there, Oklahoma $1.16, Indiana $5.20. Should be relatively straightforward, Ed. I think so. Oklahoma City, so many weapons, you know, so dangerous. Westbrook was unbelievable the other day, and then you got Durant. And Look, Indiana's a good, solid team, been a little bit of a... a 
yeah, a bit of a funk, although uh, I think they get back on track. So, yeah, look, I would think lean towards the, the Thunder, I think. Markets up soon.